Hello everyone, welcome back to another What's New video for Inventor. My name is Jason Kelly, an application specialist here at Symmetry. And today I'm going to be showing you what Autodesk have updated in the latest version of Inventor, Inventor 2022. This year there have been some major notable changes, aiming at not only improving the whole Inventor experience, but adding new functionality to the software to drive productivity and performance. So let's start off by just going through some of the general updates. And of course, Autodesk have aimed to improve performance. This year, they've focused on startup, editing components in place, graphics display, and then some more specific areas. They have also now finalized and released a full version of the dark theme. I know this was quite a popular addition last year as they had the pre-released version, and this was a good start, but this is now accessible throughout and stops you opening random palettes with the mixture of the light theme and the dark theme. The main change Autodesk have implemented this year is adding new functionality called model states. This new addition is going to be replacing level of detail as well as creating a new workflow. From speaking to some of you, I know this is going to adapt and improve your current system. Model states sit in the browser just below your overall part or assembly and can be used in a multitude of different ways. It allows you to break down your model into different stages, whether that be used for manufacturing stages, simplification levels, product families, or a custom way for your current workflow. Breaking it down further, each state can vary between dimensions, design features with suppression states, components and bill of materials, eye properties, and parameters, making the number of functions to this new tool endless. So how does it look? If we open up this part file, I've created a number of model states to show you the features and how it can be used. You will always have a master model state which is active by default, so if not utilising the tool, it will always use this default state. Just a note, you can either create model states as you are going along, or create a final model and filter the changes between them states. In this example, if I filter through the different model states created, the first few are toggling suppression states. This can be good to show things like manufacturing stages within the process. What is also nice is if I take this through to a drawing, I can create three base views showing the different model states on the same sheet. It's not only features that can vary. If I switch to this dimensions model state, I can alter model parameters and dimensions of a specific feature, so you can have different variations of the same part. This can be useful for, say, creating a family of components. For example, in my assembly, I can utilise the same part component, but with different active states. This functionality is similar to eye parts and eye assemblies, but just to point out, this won't be replacing them. With model states, you aren't able to manage and release separate files, as it will all be pulled from that same part file. So it's just something to be aware of. This is also the same for eye properties. You may want to show different properties on a drawing to show the differences between the family members. At assembly level, you can suppress and alter constraints to create manufacturing or assembly stages. Again, these can be transferred through to a drawing. Being able to create these states is going to allow for very quick assembly drawings, which in previous versions was a very time consuming and messy process. So how is this going to affect models that include levels of detail? The way Autodesk are implementing this change is when a model is opened in the new version, any custom levels of detail will automatically be transferred to a new model state, as to not lose any of the model's functionality. It is also the same for substitute levels of detail. This will appear under a subfolder within the environment called substitutes. The standard levels of detail will no longer be available. A couple of other features that the new tool will have is that you can edit all model states in one go by using the pencil icon very useful for when wanting to make a global change to a family or manufacturing process. It also works with view and positional representations, as well as working within the presentation environment, allowing you to use the functionality throughout Inventor. Moving on to some other new features, in the part environment, the fillet tool has had a big overhaul with new functionality added. Straight away, you can see the difference as it's been updated to the dockable property panel. All of the tools from the previous version are still there, but have been moved to the side on this new, again, dockable palette. Changing selections in this tool palette will affect the type of fillet and selection priority you want. 
Working from the top down, you can see we have the constant fillet selection and also now in the same area, the variable fillet and corner setbacks, which are now a lot more accessible and easier to use. As you select on each one, it will appear in the properties window to allow you to make your selection and change the radius. The corner setbacks will give you an option to choose a vertex if the appropriate edges are selected. Underneath the fillet type are the selection priority filters, so the standard edge, loop and feature commands are still there. Also, if you want to apply fillets to the whole model, you can, and this is also where the previous all rounds and all fillet selection is now hidden. Selecting on this bottom option, you can see it populates two areas in the properties panel, one for the all fillets and one for the rounds. You can then either change the radius of these or turn one or both of them off using the X. Finally, if you want to change the fillet type to smooth or inverted, this now appears in the drop down on the right hand side. As mentioned, new functionality has been added to the fillet commands, which can be found in the advanced properties. You can now choose to have the fillet roll along sharp edges. This can be useful to keep geometry of adjacent faces. You also now have the option to change the vertex type by selecting rolling ball where possible, and it will apply the shape as if a ball has been rolled along the edges and corners. Two new tools have been added to the fillet functionality, with the ability of a face fillet and a full round fillet. These are on the drop down below the standard command. The face fillet allows you to select two non-adjacent faces and it will fill in any geometry between them. The full round fillet works in a similar way, with selections being made first on a side face, then the centre face and finally another side face. This could be useful when creating connectors or supports for tube and pipe. Moving to another new update and the shrink wrap tool has been replaced with a new tool called Simplify. Simplify is going to be a game changer for those of you looking to export files to Revit, which we'll come on to later. The Simplify tool sits directly where Shrinkwrap used to, and also incorporates the Shrinkwrap Substitutes tool, which as you may have guessed, works directly with model states. Opening the tool, the first thing you will notice is the use of presets. This is going to be useful for companies who want to keep consistent standards for all exported files. Autodesk have also included four built-in presets to use the default, which are remove the least detail, remove moderate detail, remove the most detail, and no simplification. This can obviously be customised to how you want your model exported. So looking deeper into the tool, the first option you have is choose your model state, view, and positional representation, showing just how deep they have integrated the model state tool. You can then choose to replace either the part, subassembly, or assembly with envelopes. This tool is going to be useful for completely breaking down the model just to an overall shape or outer limit. Standard features from Shrinkwrap have been brought through to simplify with the exclude and chosen components option, and also removing features such as holes, fillets, chamfers, and pockets. You can continue to remove each feature by size. A couple of new features have been added, so you can now remove features by emboss and tunnels. At the bottom, you can then select the highlight option to preview which features are going to be removed. Finally, in the output section, you can choose the type of file that you want to export to, whether that be a new part file or a substitute. The substitute option will generate a new file keeping all the same details under the master model state, but under the substitutes folder will create a new simplified version if you wanted to take that through to an assembly. The final few options are choosing the save location, as well as the advanced properties which are pulled through from the shrink wrap. This leads us nicely through to the improvements made for the interoperability with Revit. As you could see on the export options on Simplify, there was an option to export to a Revit file. This is one way of creating that export, but I'm going to quickly show you the new workflow which incorporates the Simplify tool. If you go to File, then Export, there is a new option there to export to a Revit file directly. Once selected, it will automatically load up the Simplify tool. 
you will notice in the export area is automatically defaulted to Revit and you can also choose to keep or remove the model structure. The final option is the ability to update the file once exported, which I will come on to shortly. Once exported, a new folder is created in the model browser called Revit Exports. This is in an easily accessible location and creates a direct link to the Revit file. If you make any changes to the model, you can right click on the file in the model browser and update the Revit file if you left that option checked earlier. You can also edit the simplify on the right click menu. This is a very easy to use function and has drastically improved the connection between Inventor and Revit, which also allows you to utilize the BIM content environment. Not only has the connection with Revit had a revamp, but also Inventor to Fusion. You can now send part files directly to your Fusion team by going to Environments and using the Send to Fusion button. This acts as a direct link and you can choose your team and save location in Fusion, bypassing the desktop connector. This is only in the part file environment, but acts as a good shortcut to uploading your files by reducing the export-import process. The final new tool introduced in 2022 is Instance Properties. Instance Properties work differently to standard I properties as they are specific to the instance of a component in the selected file. They are also stored in the parent assembly file rather than part specific. They allow you to create different properties for the same part file and utilize them later down the line. To add an instance property, right click on the part or sub assembly on the model or in the model browser and select instance properties. The dialog box is then the same as adding a custom I property. First add the name of the property and then the property itself. So where would you use them? Instance properties can be used to add custom IDs and use them to replace item numbers or add step sequence numbers for assemblies. It could also be used to overwrite the content center values and to separate same files in an assembly for the BOM and parts lists. Just a note on them, once you add an instance property, it will appear with a bullet point at the end of the component in the browser. Finally, I'm just going to show you some of the smaller updates that have been implemented. Firstly, in the assembly environment, there is now more clarity when constraining. As you constrain your assembly together, each part will have a state of constrained, underconstrained, or unknown. You can turn this on in the options in the top right corner of the model browser. I think this is my favourite update for the new version, as it is simple and so effective for knowing which components you need to continue to work on. You can also hide fully constrained components. The next few updates are for the drawings environment. Shaded drawing views have been altered, so they now pull the lighting style directly from the active lighting style in the model. This is only for if you're using an image-based lighting style, if using a non-IBL, it will use the default option set in your application options. Some other view options that have changed is when you are placing a view, you can now choose a saved camera view and also include any 3D annotations. The camera view will be default unless you have saved a camera view in the view representation. For example, if you right click on the view model representation, you can go to camera view, save camera view. Then when you place a new base view, this is the camera orientation that it will use. The final addition to the drawings environment is a center line will now break if you place the dimension over the top. To finish off the updates, some general enhancements have been added, including reconfiguring the text box property panel. In the previous version, there were separate options for properties and parameters. These have now been merged together and you can also choose a source to select which model state or which base view on the drawing you want to pull this from. Another update is if you get lost moving windows to different screens like me, there is now a reset layout option in the view tab to just set it all back to default. And finally, iLogic. A few new updates have been added including new triggers for when activating a model state and using any parameter changes. Also, full support for instance properties, allowing you to read and create them within a rule. Here at Symmetry, we'll be running some update courses for 2022, so feel free to get in contact if you're looking to upgrade 
or for some more in-depth training on Inventor 2022.